coming. It took a long time to figure out how to make this happen. A lot of seven day weeks, a lot of relationship building. Um, thankful corporations and private parties that helped me make this happen. Heck yeah, congratulations, Michael. Fucking rock, man. You live till you're a hundred, you slept for 30 years. And all those wasted moments, and all those wasted years. Step closer to the wall, and we're about to cut. Well, I am just a candle. Beautiful. We're gonna put those with the rest of our stash. Yay, free shackles. We're just going through to do the things that we know need to be done. Like we took the console off, we uh, the little flexos, we put the ends on that, and re-secured them into the table. Uh, we got it sitting exactly where we want it. We're really lucky that it's against this wall where all our power and our air is at. So we're gonna level the feet. And then we're gonna get back into the owner's manual and do the step-by-step -step process because that's what Natalia would like to have us do. Stay tuned. The good student I am, it's time to now refer to the installation chapter on page 30. Stay tuned. Our new B-Series Piranha uh, CNC plasma table did come with a Hypertherms consumables kit to get you started. So we're going to put on the consumables right now and see if we can uh, get this machine moving around and doing everything it needs to do. So. You got your outside part, you have your swirl ring, goes down inside there, your electrode, let me see here. Electrode goes in, bam, like that. And you got your nozzle. Uh, yep, and then you got your shield. Shield goes on next, so super easy to install. Looks like I might have the nozzle. Nozzle gotta go in first maybe. Let's see here. Bam. That, yeah, that's a little better. And then the electrode, and then the swirl ring, like this. Bam, bam. Helps if you don't put it upside down. And then the shield. All that's going to spin right on to this. Easy peasy. Just like that. So it comes with two no uh, three nozzles, three electrodes, and one shield, and the body, and a swirl ring. So they think ahead when they put these machines together, give you everything that you need to get going. Today is set up day of our B-Series plasma table, and we got all the power ran, and I just wanted to kind of show other people when they get the console uh, what to do and what to expect. So it's super simple. Here's your shutoff switch and the two lines down here go out to the controls and everything. So what we did is we brought in a 6-3 uh, wire Romex. Uh, it only calls for a 310 wire, but I had 6-3 wire, so that's what we used. Uh, we put a little block here, uh, crimp thing so that it looked nice and neat going into the cabinet. Uh, the ground wire came and goes to the others there on the bottom of the case, you can see right there. And then we simply put add-on lugs, I'll move my light here, add-on lug, crimp on lugs to uh, put on the power switch there. So super simple, not challenging. This is single phase, this has to be 230 volts. Uh, it can't be 208 volts, um, the operation uh, runs best off 230, what I was told at the factory during training. Just comes up and goes to our weld plug here. Put this plug on the end of it. This matches the same style plugs as a lot of our welders that we use. So, bam, console. I wanted done. to talk for a second about installing the PowerMax 85 from Hypertherm onto our plasma table. Um, not that difficult. You have the main lead that's coiled up here, and it actually plugs into the railing here that travels along with the table. Uh, the ground clamp is very long. 
uh, if you needed to go a long ways away from the machine. And then we simply took and rounded the, the foot because that's uh, all steel frame and it's all welded together. So we should have a good round right there rather than having it in the way up here on the up here on the table, really awesome machine. This thing runs single phase or three phase. Uh, it's voltage sensing, so all you gotta do is make sure that you have your legs in the proper position and your ground in the proper position, and then uh, plug it in and it automatically senses what power it's on. In this case, we have it plugged into 240. We have a twist lock connection here that is pretty universal. Goes right in um, to the wall. This is the plug-in where we used to have our uh, manual press brake. So, all good. Uh, we have power to everything. Table's powered up. We've been moving it around some. Uh, the only thing we're doing is waiting to get this air connection uh, plugged into our air compressor. The table has this regulator right here. And basically what that does is it keeps pressure on the torch head for the breakaway system. So if it knocks into something, it opens that system, air will be shooting out right there at the, at the plasma head, and then you need to reset it once you move it back into position, the air pressure holds it into place. So we had to put a different fitting on there. Uh, we don't have uh, the soft air line, we wanted to run a, a different line, and we'll have a separate connection for that coming right off our air supply. One of the first things we did today is, before we set it in position while it was still on our forks, is put the leveling feet on there. We had an eight foot level and a four foot level, and leveling this table up uh, was a cinch. Once you get everything all adjusted up, we started with the outside four corners. And then once those were set, we simply just took the two center legs and put pressure against them to hold in position. This is a really stout table. It's all steel welded construction. Um, very pleased with it. Plenty of cross members. You can see all the steel tubing welded together. Uh, the legs are a little different than the C-Series table. These legs simply bolt on instead of uh, being tubular and all welded together like the rest of the construction. This is the drainage port. The drainage port on this table comes down to a ball valve right here so that you can easily lower and raise the water level. Uh, I've been told through my training that you need to lower and raise it like when you're cutting aluminum and then the water level is to stop a half inch short from the peaks of the cutting slats. Nice big cutting area. We traversed the main rack all the way back to one side and you have exactly 10 feet to go ahead and put your full 5 foot by 10 foot sheet in. These rollers are conveniently located uh, around the edge of the table. If you have a piece of plate that you're pushing up on there, they're perfectly at the right height uh, to the top of the water bed to help you slide it up in there and not get stuck on anything. Pretty sure we're going to have to get some heavy duty magnets so we can lift a piece of 5 foot by 10 foot plate up onto there with the lifting beam on the forklift get it positioned exactly where we want it and then load it down on there. But even if it's not positioned exactly where we want it, we can um, we can home the machine and tell it where, uh, reference it where we want our starting point. You see that? I pushed buttons and it moved. It outlined the space of the piece that was in the library that I was trying to simulate whether or not I had a good setting point where I started. And by tracing it, you can um, you can see if the piece that you have on there, if it's a drop piece or something, is uh, going to be within the field of cutting. So, so awesome.